What does it mean to be on top of Everest while a mad storm is near to hit you? We shall probably ask to the climbers who in 1996 were taking the last steps to the summit of Everest. It was one of the most tragic mountaineering disasters that have ever occurred. The 1996 Everest tragedy has inspired several Hollywoodian books and movies. Here is what happened. The 1996 Mount Everest disaster occurred on 10 the 11th of May, when eight people caught in a blizzard died on Mount Everest during attempts to descend from the summit, making it the third deadliest season. Numerous climbers were high in altitude on Everest during the storm, including the Adventure Consultants team led by Rob Hall, and the Mountain Madness team led by Scott Fisher. While climbers died on both the North Face and South Col approaches, the events on the South Face were more widely reported. Four members of the Adventure Consultants expedition perished in the disaster, including Hall, while Fisher was the one casualty of the Mountain Madness expedition. Three officers in the Indo-Tibetan border police also died in the storm. Following the disaster, the journalist John Krakauer, published in Too Thin Air, which became a bestseller. The disaster was caused by a combination of events, including, the sudden arrival of a severe storm that caught the mountaineers by surprise. Bottlenecks at the balcony and Hillary step, which caused delay in summiting. These delays were in themselves caused by delays in securing fixed ropes and the sheer number of people arriving at the bottlenecks at the same time, on the 10th of May, and the team leaders' decisions to exceed the normal turnaround time of 2 p.m., with many summiting after 14.30. Shortly after midnight on the 10th of May 1996, the Adventure Consultants expedition began a summit attempt from Camp 4, atop the South Col. They were joined by six client climbers, three guides, and Sherpas from Scott Fisher's Mountain Madness Company, as well as an expedition sponsored by the government of Taiwan. The expeditions quickly encountered delays, the climbing Sherpas and guides had not set the fixed ropes by the time the team reached the balcony, and this cost the climbers almost an hour. Upon reaching the Hillary Step, the climbers again discovered that no fixed line had been placed, and they were forced to wait an hour while the guides installed the ropes, because some 33 climbers were attempting the summit on the same day, and Hall and Fisher had asked their climbers to stay within 150 meters, or 500 feet of each other, there was a bottleneck at the single fixed line at the Hillary Step. Climbing without supplemental oxygen, guide Anatoly Bukriv from the Mountain Madness team was the first to reach the summit, at 1 p.m., but many of the climbers had not yet reached the summit by 2 p.m., the last safe time to turn around to reach camp for before nightfall. Bukriv began his descent to camp 4 at 2 p.m., having spent nearly two hours at or near the summit helping others complete the climb, by that time, Hall, Krakauer, Harris, Beidelman, Mamba, and Mountain Madness clients Martin Adams and Clev Scherning had reached the summit, and the remaining four Mountain Madness clients had arrived. At 3 p.m., snow started to fall, and the light was diminishing. On the way down, Angdoria encountered client Doug Hansen above the Hillary step and ordered him to descend. Hansen shook his head and pointed upward, toward the summit. When Hall arrived at the scene, the Sherpas offered to take Hansen to the summit, but Hall sent the Sherpas down to assist the other clients. Hall said he would remain to help Hansen, who had run out of supplementary oxygen. Scott Fisher did not summit until 1545. He was exhausted from the ascent and becoming increasingly ill. Others, including Doug Hansen and Makaluji AU, reached the summit even later. Bukreev recorded that he reached Camp 4 by 1700 hours. 
the reasons for Bukreev's decision to descend ahead of his clients are disputed. The worsening weather began causing difficulties for the descending team members, the blizzard on the southwest face of Everest was reducing visibility, burying the fixed ropes, and obliterating the trail back to Camp 4. Hall radioed for help, saying that Hansen had fallen unconscious but was still alive. Several climbers became lost on the South Colm during the storm, and they wandered in the blizzard until midnight. Near midnight, the blizzard cleared sufficiently for the team to see Camp 4, some 200 meters, 660 feet, away. In the early morning of the 11th of May, at 4.43, Hall radioed base camp and said he was on the south summit, indicating that he had survived the night. He reported that Harris had reached the two men, but Hansen, who had been with him since the previous afternoon, was now gone, and Harris was missing. By 9 a.m., Hall had fixed his oxygen mask but indicated that his frostbitten hands and feet were making it difficult to traverse the fixed robes. Later in the afternoon, he radioed base camp, asking them to call his pregnant wife, on the satellite phone. They talked about their baby. Shortly thereafter, he froze to death in his sleep. Meanwhile, Hutchison, a client on Hall's team who had turned around before the summit on the 10th of May, launched a second search for Weathers and Armour, he found both alive, but barely responsive and severely frostbitten, and in no condition to move, after consulting, he made the decision that they could not be saved by the hypoxic survivors at Camp Fawn or evacuated in time. Later in the day, however, Weathers regained consciousness and walked alone under his own power to the camp, surprising everyone there though he was still suffering severe hypothermia and frostbite. Despite receiving oxygen and attempts to rewarm him, Weathers was practically abandoned again the next morning, the 12th of May, after a storm had collapsed his tent overnight and the other survivors once again thought he had died. Krakauer discovered he was still conscious when the survivors in Camp 2 prepared to evacuate. Despite his worsening condition, Weathers found he could still move mostly under his own power. A rescue team mobilized, hopeful of getting Weathers down the mountain alive. Over the next two days, Weathers was ushered down to Camp 2 with the assistance of eight healthy climbers from various expeditions, and was evacuated by a daring high-altitude helicopter rescue. He survived and eventually recovered, but lost his nose, right hand, half his right forearm, and all the fingers on his left hand to frostbite. The climbing Sherpas located Fisher and GAU on the 11th of May, but Fisher's condition had deteriorated so much that they were only able to give palliative care before rescuing GAU. Bukreev made a subsequent rescue attempt but found Fisher's frozen body at around 7 pm. Like Weathers, GAU was evacuated by helicopter. Most of the bodies that died in 1996 are still on the Everest. <laughs>